Hey, alright, what's going on guys? Welcome back, welcome to another Python tutorial series, and in, the, in this couple of videos we're going to be checking out the Colorama module, and um, this is one really, really cool module. So uh, before we actually get started installing, playing with the syntax, actually building some cool things with it, I want to kind of introduce it to you guys. I want to show you what it is, what we can do with it, and that sort of thing. So I'm here at Google, I'm online, I'm on the internet, and uh, it should be pretty straightforward, fairly obvious, that whenever you're going to learn something new, you're going to want to research, you're going to want to look it up. So, very quickly, here we go, Python Colorama. Now, uh, you might not be able to see all that, but here we go, Python Colorama, and the first thing that comes up, our first result, is Colorama 0.2.4, and that's exactly what we're going to be working with and using. So, uh, we'll go ahead and click on that link, and uh, we'll see what we get here. So, Colorama 0.2.4, whatever the version number is, whatever you're using it, it should be pretty similar in structure and that sort of thing, if there are any changes. But anyway, it's a, cl a cross-platform colored terminal text, and uh, that's exactly what it says it does. It, it does exactly that, anyway. It's, it allows you to change the color of the text that you output onto your terminal screen whenever you're writing a Python program and that sort of thing. Because, I mean, it's obvious if you're a Python programmer that typically you're working inside the shell, you're working in the command line, and that's where you can use input, output, that sort of thing. You're not working in a graphical user interface, you're actually you're, you're in the command line interface. So, the text that you're actually in, like outputting is pretty important, so you're going to want to be able to make some variants and do th cool things with it. So that's why typically color is a good idea to have in some of your programs. Um, it is cross-platform, which means it'll work under any operating system practically, between Linux, between Mac, between Microsoft Windows especially, and that's what it is that we're worried about here. In the description, it, it fairly explicitly anyway goes ahead and says that it makes ANSI escape character sequences for producing colored terminal text and cursor positioning, and it works under Microsoft Windows. Now that's typically a big deal, because I mean, you guys know, dude, that just Windows, pff, whatever. I mean, that's that breaks all the time. So, <laughs> uh, enough of me bashing Windows, though. This is really cool. What this does is it outputs some sort of like terminal signals that will allow it to display color. And uh, here's some right here. Now, typically, you'd be able to just go ahead and manually write all these, but this package, this this uh, this module, makes it a whole lot easier because it's all in one area you don't actually have to remember all of these funky codes all you can all you have to do is type in the color that you want and it'll go ahead and print it out that way for you and it's also working on Microsoft Windows and all the other platforms that you would typically be running on so it's a really really fancy tool and it's helpful as well so let's go ahead and take a look at this even more though uh, it works with the ANSI codes I, I've covered that but of course we're working in Python that sort of thing and you can see actually some of the output some display here uh, here it is just sort of like running the demo you can see all the stuff that's happening uh, all the color that you have uh, accessibility to work with this is it in Linux and over here you can see it of, over in the command prompt you can see it running on Windows so uh, that's pretty pretty convenient and pretty awesome you can go ahead and run it just like that on any operating system but of course there may be some differences like you can see here that these screen grabs show that Colorama works on Windows but it doesn't support the ANSI, the ANSI, however you want to pronounce that, dim text sort of look. It looks just the same as normal text, but I mean, that's typically not a big deal. All you really want to be worrying about is the color. But you can manipulate the, the foreground color, the background color, and even the style, whether or not the, the text is bold or not, whether it's dim, like we were discussing just then. But uh, that's really all there is to it. The thing is, though, some of this stuff may not work on Windows, or even depending on the terminal emulator that you're running. Uh, for some of you that may not know, terminal emulator is a term that's the shell that you're actually working in. Like, see, on Windows, you'd typically be working in command prompt, or cmd.exe. For those of you that have seen my batch tutorial series, I'm sure you know a whole lot about that. And if you haven't, dude, you should totally go check out my batch tutorial series. <laughs> I don't mean to be self-advertising, though. Even if you're looking at it in, like, uh, GNOME Terminal for Ubuntu or any other GNOME desktop under Linux, uh, Xterm, Xterm has it, but DIM is also very similar to normal, I believe, for uh, the style. But there are some differences and some things, some things to worry about, but it really... It isn't all that bad. You've got the color that you want, and uh, there's a whole lot to this that we can kind of manipulate. It's it's a simple package, but it's really kind of cool at that same time. Anyway, really, with the color, too, you can make things 
a lot more evident to your the pro the user that's running your program anyway. Like if you wanted to display standard error or things that have gone wrong in red text or like success notifications, you can display those in green or warnings can be yellow and that sort of thing. So we have a whole lot of options here and it really kind of makes our program more dynamic. And uh, I think that's the best part. But anyway, uh, I think this is a pretty decent introduction video. I know I feel a little bit scatterbrained because there's so much to talk about when you're looking through this. But go ahead and give this, give this a read, guys. You can see a lot of really cool stuff that you can uh, do with this module. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and install it pretty soon uh, in the next video. I'm actually going to be branching this off just for uh, a temporary branch anyway, so you guys can see how to install it on Windows, if that's the operating system you're running, and how to install it on Linux. It's an incredibly simple operation on both. But uh, I'm going to show you guys something cool on Linux, too. So if you guys are a user of Linux, dude, go check out that video. <laughs> okay, enough of me talking, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're going to enjoy this series. And I wish you the best of luck, as usual.